reality. I actually grew up with the very first Simpsons game. Unfortunately, I found their first game so horrendous that it permanently convinced me that all future Simpsons games would be garbage. On the plus side, I recently discovered I was wrong. Some of the Simpsons games actually end up being more witty, cleverly written, and colourful than many actual Simpsons episodes. You may not exactly know what a Simpsons game should look like, but you probably know what it should feel like. And that's what we're exploring today. The solid, interactive Springfield experience, versus the shoddy, sellout, easy cash-in that some Simpsons games can be. So, without beating around the bush, let's check out what I consider the top five worst and best Simpsons games. But for this list, I'd really appreciate the help of a true expert on Simpsons. Greetings, Strider. Did you say you'd like some help reviewing these Simpsons games? Ah, howdy the real gems. Absolutely. I'm a big fan of your Simpsons reviews, and I really appreciate your opinion on these. Well, I'd be glad to. The Simpsons is certainly a topic I'm familiar with from my channel. I'm ready when you are. Okay, great. On to the countdown. For the fifth worst... The Simpsons mobile game, Tapped Out. Pay to win, woohoo. You see, we're now entering the dreaded mobile market. A place where even the idea of making a fun game is forgotten. And the sole purpose of games is to fool the player into operant conditioning psychological traps. Until we are essentially the game's dopamine addicted drone pouring money into it for our daily Skinner Box fix. You could even say a principal Skinner Box. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. Unfortunately, a lot of these types of mobile games dominate the App Store, but is Tapped Out any different? Or did they legitimately try to make a game that was fun? Well, at least the voice acting is the original cast. Nap time! Go! Go! There's even some clever, self-referential jokes. This happy little elf game is so stupid. You tap and wait and tap and wait. And for what? And these buildings do feel a lot like the authentic world of Springfield. Yeah, I agree. It's got a nice colorful sheen and some good in-character dialogue. But at its core, it just feels like freemium shovelware designed to get a quick buck out of its audience. And to me anyway, no matter how they sheen that up, it's still trying to manipulate people into paying money to continue playing. Essentially, it's a simplified city builder. But all the buildings like the Quickie Mart, the Bowling Alley, and the Maple Store will take real world time to build. Unless, of course, you buy virtual donuts. Or else wait several hours to be able to continue progressing in the game. Hey, what if I buy a bushel barrel full of elf berries? <laughs> that just beat things up. The problem with these freemium games is that they somehow end up worse than a simply bad game. At least a bad game makes some attempt to be entertaining. The inherent goal of these freemium games is always the same thing. A deviant scheme to manipulate your brain and addict you into emptying your wallet for 10 minutes of gameplay. They modify behavior by sending us reminders to play every day, and by giving us little droplets of rewards. What did you think, Jim? Well, it at least has some funny lines from the Springfield cast sprinkled in. Even if I personally wouldn't recommend this one, I can see mobile gaming fans having a lot more fun with it than we did. Yeah, I'd recommend just be careful how much money you fork out for virtual donuts. What a colossal waste of time. And for the fifth best, The Simpsons Arcade Game. Hey Jim, do you remember this one? Oh yeah, my local pizza place had one of these. Back when coin-operated arcade games ruled the world and took your allowance money. Yeah, and back in the day, when I first saw this in the arcade box, I knew what it was immediately. And so many kids like me wanted to play it. Even 28 years later, the levels remain a colorful, vibrant flurry of imagination and action. The gameplay itself is fairly bare bones. It's basically your simple classic beat-em-up from the 90s arcade days. Yeah, it's kind of similar to games like Golden Axe or Ninja Turtles or Final Fight. But I would call this a much more intense, fast-paced experience than something like Golden Axe. Like, the zaniness just never really stops here. Homer, Marge, Bart, and Lisa basically have to punch their way through the various locations. Places like Downtown Springfield, Moe's Tavern, or even the forest they visited in Call of the Simpsons in Season 1. Maggie was kidnapped by Smithers during a diamond theft. Maggie! 
So the family brawls their way through waves of schmucks, mostly dressed in purple suits for some reason. We mentioned this one early because some people may find the old school beat em up gameplay repetitive, and you'll probably cruise through it within an hour. Especially if you pick Bart, like I always do. Gotta love that skateboard attack. But even if it's short, the Simpsons arcade game is one high energy, intense hour. While it might be a bit of a tedious solo experience, I think it can make for a great co op party game and a fun novelty for a few friends. And the fourth worst. Bart vs. the Space Mutants. Ugh, this game. Uh, sounds like you remember this one well, Strider. Dang right I do. Long ago, when I first saw the Simpsons arcade game, my six-year-old brain thought, Wow, I want that experience on my Master System. Oh, this one has Bart on the front. He's my favorite character. He's such a rebel. So literally two weeks after the dreaded Fantasia game, I rented Bart vs. the Space Mutants. What I got was something that wasn't just boring, it was treacherously, painfully unforgiving. The difficulty on this thing is so racked up that I actually got even less far than the Fantasia game. Not only did I not get past the first level, but I didn't even get past the second screen. Even without the insane difficulty curve, one of the big problems is the controls are blocky and unresponsive. So even jumping or shooting spray paint can be tedious and unpredictable. Once again, I had a weekend of getting no enjoyment whatsoever out of my rental. This time, I was so frustrated that I gave up by the second hour. I know that may seem like a while, but back in the 90s, our choice of games was much more limited. And the sad part of this lousy game is, we all bought into it. Yeah, but it was just so exciting to see a Simpsons game at all. Despite most critics panning this game in 1992, this was the first Simpsons game we ever got, so everybody had high expectations. And Bart Simpson was all us kids could think about back then. Seeing Bart on a game box was almost like seeing Sonic on a game box. It was like a magical spell was cast on my six-year-old mind that compelled me to pick up the game the second I saw it. And now that I think about it, maybe this horrible Simpsons game experience was the reason it took me 20 years to ever pick up a Simpsons game again. Spray paint is limited, the puzzles can be vague, you have a health bar of two, and enemies are constantly rampaging towards you. You play as Bart, who is apparently the only one who knows aliens are invading the planet. In the first level, the aliens apparently need these random bits of purple junk for their doomsday device. So you have to spray paint anything that's purple to a different color to stop their plans. Huh. Why'd they choose purple? I don't know. I guess it's one of those unsolved Simpsons mysteries. You should see level 2 where you have to collect hats. It's also very confusing and arbitrary. Hmm. Well, either way. Bart vs. Space Mutants was a really frustrating way for The Simpsons to start their game series. Cool, man. And for the fourth best... The Simpsons Road Rage. As we stepped into the PlayStation 2 graphics, The Simpsons was suddenly giving us full 3D worlds of Springfield. And this version of Springfield felt well laid out, vibrant, and pretty driver friendly. Even though the character 3D modeling still needed a bit of work, I don't feel they were yet capturing the full cartoony feel of the Simpsons characters. Some scenes looked pretty awkward. You'll rue the day, you cross sea Montgomery Burns! Yeah, although the graphics are still a bit janky, I was a fan of Crazy Taxi growing up, so the gameplay in Road Rage was right up my alley. But this time I get to careen the car around Springfield, with some nice quips from Springfield characters all the way. Millhouse, are you supposed to be out here? Yeah, both my parents lost custody. Cool. Just like the original Crazy Taxi, you collect citizens and drop them off to various landmarks. But in this case, it's Springfield residents, and the landmarks are familiar spots of Springfield. That's about all there is to the gameplay, really. Unless you're a big fan of Crazy Taxi, you might find the game getting repetitive pretty quick. It's interesting to hunt the little extra secrets on the map, but there aren't that many of them. It does have a fun two-player mode, though. Yeah, the original Crazy Taxi never had a multiplayer mode, and having the option of a friend to compete with was a nice bonus. But overall, the challenging, if predictable, gameplay, combined with the various quips and lines from Springfield residents, made it a short-term but fun experience for me. It's certainly more quirky and intriguing than a lot of other Simpsons games. This was a simple, but solid, Simpsons driving game experience. Unfortunately, we were about to discover that Simpsons games could get a whole lot worse. The third 
War Simpsons class. The Simpsons Skateboarding. Jeepers, these early 2000s skateboard games just don't age well. I won't dwell too long on this one because all these tacky Tony Hawk ripoff games just kind of blend into one bland, grainy cement milkshake. To start with, the 3D graphics look like Frankenstein's uglier brother Myron, and even just the environments alone fail. Unlike Road Rage, the town of Springfield looks like a boxy, generic, run-of-the-mill town with nothing unique about it. Even the trees look horrible, and the movement is incredibly unsatisfying and clunky. And if you even dare try a trick, the careening freight train of a skateboard we operate will inevitably slip out from under us. You probably won't want to play multiple characters either, because your character levels up their stats, and they don't transfer over. This can be very frustrating. Yeah, because the only way to make it slightly less likely Homer's face will be ground into the pavement repeatedly is to heavily level up his stats. You've probably seen the gameplay before in every other Tony Hawk ripoff. Collect the items and the letters while doing some tricks. That's about it. There's little else to say. The cast are pug-fugly to look at, the backgrounds are bland, and the characters sometimes can't physically perform tricks at all. Again, I would just say treat yourself to better and just play Tony Hawk 4 instead. Yeah. And for the third best Simpsons game... The Simpsons Mobile Arcade Game. Now this is more a high-quality mobile game. And it doesn't feel like it's constantly trying to scam us either. It just feels like a fun, solid beat-em-up. Unlike the original arcade game, this one's a single player. But it's got a lot of clever in-jokes, a colorful presentation, and the sound effects take me right back to the episodes of the show. What the? No. <laughs> the controls are comfortable enough to use. Although I'm not a big fan of the iOS transparent buttons and joystick in general, they're pretty intuitive and not intrusive enough here. A nice addition from the original arcade game is that you can now wield weapons. When enemies carry tasers or baseball bats, you can steal them. And this does add some variety to Homer's combat. Although the weaker enemies can get a bit repetitive, the six bosses are a big highlight, much like the original arcade game. And I was genuinely surprised at some of the faces Homer faces off against. I think the game's presentation is mainly what ties it all together. All the town's locations, sounds, and the characters certainly feel authentic to the show. Yeah, it certainly does capture the show's atmosphere. What do you say, Jim? Do you think you'd recommend this one? I think I would. If you're a Simpsons fan, you may well find this a fun extra for your smartphone. And the second worst... Virtual Bot. Virtual Bot! Oh dear. Yeah, this game has a bit of a reputation for being abysmal. I was actually talking about Homer eating Bart as a corn dog, but yeah, the gameplay isn't great either. Oh uh, yeah, that game over scene caused a surprising amount of turned heads, though nowadays, cannibalism just seems to be a regular day for Homer. On a side note, you gotta do an extra seconds review on that episode sometime, man. Huh, maybe I'll give that one a full review for Halloween. Anyway, this is definitely among the most surreal, weird Simpsons games. Bart has volunteered for a virtual reality experiment, and we're basically just given a handful of really bizarre minigames. Bart might be a dinosaur in prehistoric times, biking through post-apocalyptic Springfield after nuclear disaster, or he might be an escaped pig from Krusty's Pork Factory. Weird. While I do like the variety on display here, the controls are again quite clunky and some levels can be impossibly difficult. Though I would say the weirdness in itself is pretty intriguing. And it's an interesting enough novelty for a one-time play. While I don't recommend trying to actually win Virtual Bart, you might at least get a kick out of trying some of these quirky, but interesting enough minigames. Yeah, Virtual Bart is probably worth it for the one-time novelty. <laughs> and I think the second best Simpsons game is... The Simpsons Game. Aha, now we're onto something more polished and clever, with very self-aware humor too. The weird part is, this is probably among the best Simpsons episodes I've seen in years, despite being a game. It's got a lot of clever, lively dialogue from Simpsons characters, and a wide variety of creative stories. Who's number one? We're number one, that's right! Oh Homer, try to show a little dignity in victory. I agree. 
This EA game was actually released the same year as a Simpsons movie, and personally, I found the writing and story in this game much funnier than what I felt was a very lackluster movie. We finally made this video game safe for children. I proclaim an end to video game violence. <laughs> Many modern episodes just don't seem to get this much effort and thought into the writing. There's a lot of satirical, self-aware humor on display here. In fact, every level is like a new episode. I summon wonderful magical animal! Whether it be Homer revisiting the land of chocolate, Bartman begins, Lisa saving the trees from lumberjacks, or even this out of the blue Medal of Honor parody, aka Medal of Homer. What war is this? Don't they teach you anything in school? It's the Civil War, duh! One of my favorite levels was probably NeverQuest, which sees Homer and Marge setting off on a D&D world of hobbits to slay the dastardly Patty and Selma dragon. It doesn't go well for Patty and Selma. A bit like the South Park games, The Simpsons game is basically a parody of a video game, while also simultaneously managing to be an enjoyable game. It's mostly a 3D platformer, and all the levels and scenery certainly feel within the spirit of The Simpsons. There's a good 15 levels, and each one feels like a new episode, many in a new setting. It starts with Bart finding the Simpsons game manual, which apparently lets him start using superpowers, when he realizes he's in a game. Whoa! I'm in this game! I wonder what my moves are. Jumping, floating, oh man, I gotta try this! Yes, I agree. The fourth wall is completely broken to pieces here. And much of the game is each Simpsons family member going on their quest using their own unique game superpowers. Bart turns into Bartman, Homer turns into a ball for some reason, while Marge uses a megaphone to form mobs, and Lisa can actually employ the Buddha's hand to throw stuff at enemies. Once again, bosses are a real highlight too. Each one is just as outrageous as the last. They can include the Lard Lad Donut statue coming to life, an anime-style Pokemon parody, and... Matt Groening, who summons Bender and Zoidberg. Yeah, I guess that checks out. The Simpsons game is really something special in the Simpsons game library. This is much more like an interactive set of Simpsons TV episodes than ever before. This is actually one I'd recommend to just about any Simpsons fan. I would too. <laughs> Bart, Dad, you just vanquished your own creator. The philosophical implications would make Eugene Ionesco's head spin. Hmm. And furthermore, kick him! And the number one worst Simpsons game is The Simpsons Wrestling. This is nigh on unplayable. According to Wikipedia, Simpsons Wrestling is apparently considered one of the worst games of all time. And from start to finish, it's cash in shovelware scooped up off the sidewalk by Fox and painted Simpsons to capitalize on the franchise. In concept, I like the idea of a Simpsons wrestling game. You'd think the comedic zaniness of The Simpsons would translate well into the extreme nature of wrestling. Yeah, well, not here. At all. Let's just start with the obvious. It's a flickery, ugly, jagged mess to look at. I'd say they look like Lego blocks, but Lego games look way more sophisticated than this. Simpsons Wrestling is on that next level of hideous wastebasket gaming. If the amount of technology that went into making Simpsons Wrestling look so horrible could be harnessed for the power of good, it could probably solve all the world's problems. One of which is the fact that this game exists. What I'm trying to say is the graphics are unattractive to the point that you may become less attractive simply by playing it. There's also controls that are so loose and sloppy that you might as well operate the controller upside down, underwater with the lights out. But don't actually do that. That sounds dangerous. No one attack is any more or less powerful than the others, so there's no point doing any complex moves. You may as well just button mash. I can say without hyperbole, this is a million times better than boxing. And even if you do, there's no actual wrestling moves in this game, despite the title. The only way Simpsons Wrestling is even remotely related to wrestling is two people being in a ring with ropes around. Even if you are a die-hard Simpsons fan, this is the only game on your shelf and you're depressingly bored, I still wouldn't recommend touching this nuclear waste dump of a game. I don't know, go social distance with a walk in the forest instead, or watch Netflix. Technically, the only even slightly redeemable part of this game is the short moment we get to hear the opening lines and taunts of the characters, since they are voiced by the original cast. Some may call this an unfair generalization, but all Flanderists suck! 
Most of the characters are here, or at least they're rear and ugly doppelgangers. Even the music sounds like it was ripped from an 80s VHS porno that was already low budget and then played through a Taco Bell toilet. This game must have been a rush production nightmare, and I pity the code monkeys who had to deal with this passionless cash grab. Personally, I think The Simpsons Wrestling is easily the number one worst Simpsons game. I'm a mer diddly erdler. Hey, I can live with that. And I think the number one best Simpsons game is Simpsons Hit and Run. Have you ever wondered what GTA would be like in Springfield? Surprisingly, it turns out to be a lively, interesting experience, with all the zaniness of a Simpsons episode kept intact. Hit and Run remains the gold standard for Simpsons games. To start with, even if the graphics have dated, this is still what a Simpsons game should feel like. The way Springfield just unfolds and seamlessly connects from one callback to the next, and the personality of The Simpsons show is really intact here. When Homer's causing mischief in town, he acts exactly how I'd expect him to act in an old classic episode. The gameplay is essentially a clone of the Grand Theft Auto open world, yet the harshness of Grand Theft Auto isn't attached to this violence. I Meaning I was constantly smiling as I ran over and plowed into cars, jumped over tire fires, and chuckled over Homer and the Simpsons family's chats with other residents. Homie, Lisa left for school without her science project. Can you get it to her? Oh, uh, do I have to? You can drop it off on the way to work. And I have to go to work? Callbacks are everywhere. If Homer needs a plow, he'll hunt down Barney's Plow King. Barney, can I borrow the Plow King? Take what you want, sexy leprechaun. Just don't shoot me with that dark gun. If he's looking for something more luxurious, how about the car built for Homer? Tamako is now advertised on billboards. Buzz Cola remains the local soda monopoly. And this one isn't poisonous to anybody. That we know of. And of course, Drink Duff. Every time I open the game and get Homer into the driver's seat, it's always a funny, action-packed, high-speed, light-hearted spectacle that feels right intact with the world of Springfield. And I don't think the gameplay has been this vibrant in a Simpsons game since the 1992 arcade classic. This is authentically Simpsons in both world and feel. You play mainly as Homer, Bart, Lisa, Marge, and Apu, driving around and completing GTA-style missions collecting various objects, racing against familiar characters, and my personal favorite, destroying their cars. Smashy smashy! There's an underlying story about the Simpsons stopping Kang and Kodos from terrorizing Springfield, but generally these missions are all accomplished by racing other cars, wrecking other cars, or just collecting items. But like GTA, it has that sandbox style, so you can complete missions at your own pace. So if you want to go collect items or run over pedestrians instead, you can. Though Chief Wiggum's boys will chase you as your wanted level increases. There really isn't much else to say. It's simply an authentic, genuinely funny, well-written Simpsons episode come to life, somehow through a GTA clone. Yet it feels very unique at the same time. I personally consider Simpsons Hit and Run the number one best Simpsons game. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Zombies eating brains? <laughs> oh, this is gonna rock! I think The Simpsons finished overall on a strong note with Hit and Run. For the most part, new Simpsons games have disappeared nowadays. While EA might still occasionally release a Simpsons mobile game here and there, we've probably now fully witnessed both the fall and eventual rise of The Simpsons games. And personally, for all the good and bad, overall, I've enjoyed the unique journey The Simpsons games have given us. By the way, thanks to the great company, The Real Gems, it's been a real pleasure to have you on the show. Anytime, Strider. It was nice to be able to explore the gaming side of the Simpsons universe. And if you feel we missed any particularly awesome or lousy Simpsons games, feel free to leave your own thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. Ow.